So I'm back in the city, back in Brisbane, and um, I just dropped the car off in the city at uh, Charlotte Street, and uh, I'm just on my way to South Bank to attend a um, a B in, which is a uh, Extinction Rebellion South East Queensland event uh, run by XR Families, where they've got a whole bunch of people dressed up as bees um, who are going to go to South Bank and uh, do a B in. So I might go and do that, but on, but that's not for another half an hour. So I'm just sitting in the city gardens here next to the river uh, on a park bench uh, surrounded by bamboo. And this bamboo thicket has been taken over by fin chickens. And fin chickens, for those of you who are unaware of what fin chickens are, uh, are also sometimes referred to as sacred items. Um, exactly what is sacred about an animal that spends most of its life picking rubbish out of bins and, and ruining people's lunches when it lands on the table in a cafe, this is what they're known to do. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but that's the vagaries or the mysteries of um, taxonomic classification, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to show you a picture of a bin chicken. Hello. There's a bin chicken right up there, look, on the top of that bamboo. There we go, look. You see, it's white and it's got a black, bold head with a long beak. And uh, over here, we've got more bamboo thickets. Stand by, just trying to. Um, right there. And then go back there. So, this is the bamboo thicket across the little parkway. And there are the bin chicken nests, which is where they bring the trash that they get out of the bin and they feed it to their little babies. This place, you can hear them, they go, arr, 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 noise. Anyway, the reason why I'm telling you the story about the bin chickens is if you think about what we're actually looking at here, let's go back around. So we're sitting in a park, right? Here's the parklands, there's Brisbane City, Riverside Place or whatever. Okay, so we're in the parklands. And just look at the, this little, um, patch of ground ahead of us here and I'm thinking back to my time over the last few weeks in Tamworth Tamworth and surrounds and one of the things you see a lot in Tamworth and surrounds out in the country there is you occasionally see these big Australian windmills the ones with the many many blades that basically pump water off from under the ground and sometimes you'll see a little solar power system set up there a couple of two or three solar panels on a on a tracker which is also running one of these pumps that's bringing the water from under the ground and they bring the water up from under the ground and then they put it either in a trough or a dam and the purpose of that is to basically keep the cows alive so the cows can come along and drink from the trough and then the cow wanders off and eats grass in inverted commas what's left of grass in those parched vast tracts of land and so you've got this thousands of hectares of land with this pump lifting water from under the ground this is, so this is artesian water putting it in the trough in order to keep a small number of cattle alive on that huge terrain now just think about that from an ecosystems perspective right now right so basically what you've got think of it in terms of opportunity cost this is what I'm thinking as I'm sitting here Imagine if you didn't have the cows, right, on that huge tract of land. Imagine instead that what you did was you put in some subsurface irrigation or some really simple inexpensive irrigation mechanism and that when you lifted that water to the surface, instead of having it in a trough, which is going to then evaporate until the cow comes and eats it, you put it in the ground and you grow bamboo. Bamboo like this, for example. And... In so doing, what you do is you're creating a little microhabitat where the bin chickens can come and live. The bin chickens and the other creatures that might decide to live in the forest, as well as kicking off microbial communities in the soil, worms, you'd have lizards and things like that. Imagine if you put in some little bits of, one of the, I don't know if you've ever seen a bee hotel or an insect hotel, which is basically like a little, a little shed full of tubes where the insects come in and occupy. And so just imagine the water, the opportunity cost of feeding that water to the cows, well evaporating it off because it sits there in an open drum quite often, 
evaporating oil and feeding it to the cows when instead you could put something like this in its place using that same amount of water. Now, I don't know what the economics of having a bamboo thicket are. I don't know what you do with the bamboo. Maybe you'd coppice it. So you'd come and you'd crop it uh, every year and use that and then it will grow back and you cut it and grow, cut and grow, cut and grow, coppicing, right? And then you could use that bamboo as a building material. You could use the bamboo uh, for fibers, uh, flooring. You could use the bamboo, uh, you could turn it into charcoal and use it as a high quality fuel. Um, and, but of course also you've got the ecosystems benefit, the biodiversity um, aspects to it. And that's my, that's my little ramble at the moment as I'm sitting here contemplating the um, the bamboo thicket in the city gardens in Brisbane um, for what it's Tam worth. <laughs>